we're kind of mixing it up a little bit, Nate. We're going to do a draft between the 23 and the 24 class now. 24 class as prospects and the 23 class with what we know now. You have the 101. Yes, I do. What you got for me? This was an easy pick. I picked up CJ Stroud. Um, currently the quarterback one on keep trade cut, Mike. So uh, very valuable. Um, the number one quarterback at this moment between these two draft classes. I, I will say I do think Caleb Williams has a chance to uh, be up there at that point, but he's got to get in the field and do something first. And CJ Stroud obviously had an incredible rookie season last year. He's got a ton of weapons around him now in Houston with Joe Mixon and Stephon Diggs being added to you know an already pretty good offense with Nico Collins and Tank Dell. So wheels up for CJ Stroud. Easy pick here at the 101. I like this pick here. Let's move on to the 102, and that would be me. And I went with Bijan Robinson. So far, the 24 class, not hacking it, but yeah. we're only two picks in. Had a decent rookie season. We're still in the pretty easy pick range here uh, at one and two. But hey, let's kick it back to the 103. Where are you going? Yep, right here. I'm going, uh, you know, pick the quarterback one of the 23 class. Now I'm picking the 20 uh, quarterback one of the 2024 class. I'm going Caleb Williams here. I, I have all the belief in the world in Caleb Williams. I think he's an incredible prospect. What he's done over three years in college football has been really impressive. Um, you know, the team success hasn't necessarily been there, but that certainly was not Caleb Williams' fault. Um, he was doing the best that he could with the cast that he had around him. Um, and I was just talking today on Twitter. You know, the first real appearance that Caleb Williams had in college football, he came in uh, at the beginning of the second quarter. Oklahoma was down three scores to Texas in the Red River shootout, you know, one of the biggest rivalry games in all college football, and led them to a 55-48 to victory as a true freshman. He did that three years ago. I'm ex so excited to see what he does in the NFL. The next pick, the 104. Hey, we're still in the it's pretty easy category. It gets a little tougher yeah. after this. I'm going with Marvin Harrison Jr. This is a guy right here. I think it's safe to say he's probably being considered a top five at the least top 10 dynasty wide receiver asset. And that's not yep. stepping foot on a NFL field as of yet. We know what he could do solid in all aspects of the game. Nate, let's kick it back to the one Oh five. Yeah. You pick Marvin Harrison jr. You're hoping Marvin Harrison jr. Has a rookie season like Puka Nakua, who was my pick at the one Oh five here, the best rookie season we've ever seen from any wide receiver ever. And I know there's doubt still, um, because he was a fifth round pick because Cooper cups across him because Matthew Stafford's getting older. It's, it's, he's a wide receiver who just had the best rookie season uh, we've ever seen. Like there's a lot of longevity in Puka Nakua. He has proven it over the course of that season that he is not just a flash in the plan. He is not no Travis Fulgham and uh, Puka Nakua is here to stay. Oh, had to throw the Travis Fulgham in there. Didn't you? <laughs> did. I'm up to one Oh six. I'm going with Jameer Gibbs. We're talking about efficiency, man. This guy was super efficient, missed some time, some injuries last year. It's okay. Or he got banged up a little bit, I should say. Um, still, even with David Montgomery on the field, we saw what he could do. I don't know if he's ever going to get the full workload. He's one of those guys where efficient with his touches. I love what Jameer Gibbs brings to the team, and they like him there in Detroit too. So, Nate, let's kick it back to you at the 107. I guess we're staying in the Motor City. Yeah, we sure are. I'm picking the first tight end off the board, the current tight end, tight end one in Dynasty, Sam Laporta, another guy who had one of the you know more impressive rookie seasons that we've seen from the position. Not quite as good of a rookie season, maybe as Kyle Pitts, maybe um, you know less receiving yards, more touchdowns. We'll get there. But uh, Sam Laporta, obviously one of the top tight ends in the league already. Um, the production that he had out in Detroit this year was really, really impressive, and. I still think he's the number two target there after the sun God. You know, I don't think Jamison Williams is surpassing him anytime soon. Jameer Gibbs is going to get a lot of work out of the backfield, but Sam Laporta, you know, he's, he's got a good connection with Jared Goff. And you know, we, I don't know why we haven't seen it yet, but Jared Goff's going to be getting that contract extension very soon. Sam Laporta in his rookie year, 86 catches, 889 yards, 10 touchdowns. Kyle Pitts, 68 a receptions, 1,026 receiving yards, but only one touchdown move on i'm going to keep it at the tight end position and i'm going to take brock bowers you know we're talking generational um was kind of hoping laporta would come to me here but he did not should have taken him with my last pick hey my mistake learn from my mistakes everybody i'm um, still brock bowers no matter where he goes if he's a tight end two on a team to start he's going to get schemed into the offense this is a guy you can't keep off the field 
You can line him up everywhere. Play him at fullback if you want. He's going to be efficient. He's going to be an absolute monster. It's going to be a nightmare for defenses. Brock Bowers at the 1-8. Nate, let's kick it back to the 109. Mr. Quarterback Heavy is what I should call you. <laughs> Who are you taking here? Yeah, you know, we haven't seen a quarterback off the board for a little bit. We got the tight ends, um, which I could see Brock Bowers surpassing Sam Laporta in dynasty rankings, but until he actually does it, I had to pick Laporta first. Um, but at this point, I'm taking Drake May, who is my quarterback too in this draft class coming up. Unfortunately, as much as I like Bryce Young coming out, he didn't do very well his rookie year. So the next quarterback up for me is Drake May. I'm excited to see what he goes, where he goes in the draft. Um, I think wherever it is, he's going to have a lot of opportunity. His upside is really, really high in the next level. Um, there's definitely some question marks with him, which is why he's dropped this far below the tight ends. But the upside is definitely there. He's he's very toolsy, Mike, as we like to say. He's tradesy, Nate. Tradesy. Um, I'm going to stick with my favorite position. And at the 110, I'm going to take Dalton Kincaid. Now, he did not have the season that everybody wanted him to have because I think what happened was everyone expected him. Oh, like he had that later ascension, and then everyone expects him. Oh, he's going to come out and have a 1,000 yards receiving. Right? I, I think people expected that, but respectable season. He did have 91 targets last year, Nate, and that was in 16 games. He started 11, 73 catches, 673 yards, and two touchdowns. So I do think that the sky's the limit for him, and it is going to continue to get better, especially he's tied to Josh Allen in Buffalo there. I love it. If you had, say, the 106, where you would expect uh, these next two guys to probably go around that area, would you would you be considering using the 106 to go get Dalton Kincaid? Yeah, I would strongly consider it. Dalton Kincaid, for me, is... Are you talking about over, like, Brock Bowers or the next two guys that are on the board? The next two guys on the board. Then, yeah, I would. Um, I think Dalton Kincaid is going to have a better second year than than rookie season. I could see him going over a thousand yards, and he's a guy that could help you compete this year and still be a staple in your team for a pretty pretty decent amount of time. Yeah, especially valuable in superflex um, in tight end premium leagues. Yeah. Um, you know, because he, he's going to get a lot of receptions over there. But I don't know if you can get him for the one hundred six in a tight end premium. That's the problem. Hey, hey, you might be able to because I'm picking up this next guy, Rome Odunze, at the one eleven. And if you can pick him up at the 106, I think you're very lucky because I think Rome is, you know, as much as I love Marvin Harrison, as much as I love Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze might be my favorite wide receiver. While he's not my number one wide receiver in the draft class, he is probably my favorite wide receiver to watch. Um, you know, he was the first prospect to have an all green route tree, um, according to Matt Harmon over at Reception Perception. So his ability to run routes, he is silky smooth. He is a really good, well nuanced route runner. And then if he, you know, I know, Mike, you've had some separation questions about Romo Dunze, but Correct. in his, in his case, if he can't separate for some reason, he wins at the catch point so well. Uh, I, I just think he is such a pro ready player. I think he steps into the league and is immediately a wide receiver one for a team and can immediately go over 1200 yards, you know, catch eight receptions, handle 120 targets. I think he steps in and just is a dominant wide receiver from day one. At the 112, I'm going to take the guy who's maybe his route tree is not as green as Roma Dunze's, but hey, great hands, still a great route runner and slippery after the catch. I'm going with Malik Neighbors. The other guy, I love what he brings to the table. People are slipping on him a little bit too, I've noticed. I, maybe not so much as they're just higher on Roma Dunze than they were in the past. I've been leading the, the Roma Dunze hype train over here. Yeah. Circling that Roma Dunze wagon is Nate Christian, but I'm going Malik Davis, and that's going to close out the first round. 201, who do you got for us? Yeah, I think a lot of people were expecting this name to pop in the, pop up in the first round, but I think the two of us are a bit more wary about this guy, Anthony As Richardson. I, I love the upside of Anthony Richardson, and I think the fit over in Indianapolis, he's got a good offense around him. He's got a great head coach, a great offense that you know is going to be called over there, but he's missed a lot of game time both in his college career and in his pro career, just doesn't have a lot of game experience. And while I, I absolutely believe he's plenty young to continue to develop and learn, and Shane Steichen has actually said he's a great processor and that his processing ability has been really impressive. So if all those things come together, Anthony Richardson's upside is really, really high in dynasty fantasy football. For me, still enough question marks. Well, I wanted to go after all these guys in the first round that I feel so good about, feel so confident about. And I was still happy to pick up Anthony Richardson here at the 201. I mean, obviously, uh, the, I'm we're calling him the 13th best player 
Um, that is obviously very arguable. I'm sure you could argue him up anywhere up to like the fifth or sixth. Nate, that's 202. I'm taking my first quarterback off the board. Ooh. I'm going to go with J.J. McCarthy, um, another guy who's rising late here. People knocking him. Oh, he didn't put up stellar numbers in college. He did exactly what was asked of him by the Michigan offense, but still J.J. McCarthy. He stands tall in the pocket. Great arm. He can put the ball pretty much anywhere on the field. At the 202, this is a guy that could be a steal. So, Nate, at the 203, what are you doing? Jaden Daniels is here, and I have question marks about Jaden Daniels as well, as we do about most all of these quarterbacks in this draft class, um, yeah. I, even Caleb Williams. But Jaden Daniels, I couldn't let him fall any farther after this. I do have Anthony Richardson over him. But at this point, uh, spoiler alert, we're not picking up any more quarterbacks in this draft, and Jaden sure. Daniels is the last one that we're going to pick up. Um, he's got a ton of upside, a Heisman winning um, trophy campaign that he just put together for LSU. Throwing to Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. definitely helped, but he looks good on film. His ability to run is very, very impressive. He just needs to protect himself better and you know do better over the middle of the field when he's passing the ball. So a couple question marks, but if he goes to a, a good landing spot, the upside is certainly there. Speaking of uh, Brian Thomas Jr., I'm taking him with the next pick. at 204 NFL catches on the sideline in the corner of the end zone. Great hands, kind of lanky, but still finds a way to get open. Decent after the catch. I love Brian Thomas Jr. Nate, to the 205, what are you doing? I'm picking up Rashi Rice, who a lot of people have been uh, down on over the last couple of weeks. And I understand why, but I get it. I, I get mentioned it. this in a video with Bob uh, the other week that I think there's been a lot of misinformation spread about um, Rashi Rice's situation as well. Not in the media. They would not uh, do that to Who us. would imagine? You know, once TMZ gets involved, you know that the facts are there. Yeah. So uh, Rashi Rice, I know Marquise Brown signed, but for a one-year deal, and it's been a while since he's been healthy and consistent on the field. Uh, Rashi Rice, second in the league last year with that yak rec step that we love. He's, he's the number one wide receiver for Mahomes. Maybe not the number one target. Maybe still behind Travis Kelsey. But there's still a lot, a lot to like about Rashi Rice, and I'm picking him up here. I love that pick, the 205. And the 206, I'm taking the first running back from the 2024 class that is none other than Jonathan Brooks. I know he's coming off of the injury, but I just think that he's a guy that can be a three-down back. We see the burst. We see this, the long speed. We see the power and the lateral agility. He has it all. And if he goes to a good spot, Dallas, here's a chance to do something this offseason, draft yeah. Jonathan Brooks. Um, at the 206, this could end up being an absolute steal. Some people might think that Nate's next pick at the 207 would be better, but I still think Jonathan Brooks has more of a three-down ability than Nate's pick does. But, Nate, why don't you tell us who it is? Yeah, maybe he doesn't have the, the three-down ability. Maybe he's not the workhorse running back that Jonathan Brooks could become. But Devon A. Chan's efficiency numbers are off the charts. For running backs with at least 100 carries in the season, uh, no one's even close to the yards per carry that Devon A. Chan put up last year. I believe it was like it was either 6.8 or 7.8. Um, but either way, like I said, no one's even close to that number. Um, his efficiency and the efficiency of that Dolphins offense, there is just so much potential for fantasy football upside. And we saw it just his rookie year, you know, multiple games, like over 30 points. He's got that weekly upside. Maybe the seasonal upside isn't there because I know some people are worried about the injuries. That's what's dropped him this far. But at the 207, I'm not picking up any other running backs at this point. Devontae Chan's the last guy I'm picking up because of the upside that he brings to the table. At the 208, I was surprised he was on the board for me, but we got Baltimore's own Zay Flowers yep. bringing it in. We saw what he did in the rookie season. And, hey, guess what? Wide receivers going to Baltimore. Not a death sentence anymore. Lamar Jackson can still run the ball, but, hey, He's no slouch as a thrower of the football either. Um, Zay Flowers loved what he did in his rookie season. Really excited to see him build on it. And a healthy Mark Andrews coming back should only open things up even more mm -hmm. for Zay Flowers. So at the 208, that's where I'm going. Nate, the 209, what do you have for us? Yeah, I'm sticking with a talented player that maybe is not in the best situation. Jackson Smith and the Jigba, JSN, you know, didn't have the most impressive rookie season, but honestly fulfilled the expectations that I had of him when he was going into a wide receiver room that consisted of DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, two very good NFL wide receivers. It was a little silly of anyone to think that JSN would just walk in there and push those guys out of the way. I know Tyler Lockett's a little bit older and everyone just thought he would, could just all of a sudden be washed, but he, he wasn't washed to end last season and he wasn't washed this past season. 
Um, and they signed him to a longer deal that does obviously affect JSN. But I think there's a chance that we do see JSN pass Tyler Lockett this season. Tyler Lockett's still going to be quite involved, though. I don't think he's just going to be phased out of that offense. No. But there, there's a lot of potential with these three wide receiver sets. Geno Smith does need to pull it together, though, for this to work out. And take another tight end at the 210. Go with Michael Mayer. I feel like a guy who's kind of forgotten about here. Big, athletic. We see that this is a guy, tons of potential. And there's some questions. Devonta Adams is getting older. Nate, your boy is still there. We know that. But still, I'm not going to mention him because I don't need angry texts from Zach. Uh, Michael Mayer, a great third option in that offense, um, possibly over his career, could end up being more than that, I think. I love what Mayer brings to the table. Nate, your last pick. What do you got for me? Last pick, one of my favorite receivers from last year's class, Jordan Addison. He's fallen this far now after an impressive rookie season, but there's some question marks at the quarterback position for the Vikings. And obviously, he's not going to surpass the other wide receiver on that team for wide receiver one anytime soon. So I need to make sure I have a quarterback in Minnesota that can support two wide receivers. But Jordan Addison is a very talented wide receiver, was used down the field a lot last year and showed up when Justin Jefferson was out and worked well as a wide receiver one for that offense, even with, um, you know, not Kirk Cousins being the quarterback. He still put up good numbers. So Jordan Addison, I think, is a very talented wide receiver and kind of being slept on right now, I think is a good value right now. It's kind of who I was hoping for at the 212, but we started we got with a good value team. here, Mike. We did. We started with the text, and we're going to end with one, and that's Tank Dell. I already miss you, and man, that is going to be a fun offense down there. It was mm-hmm. Devon Diggs, Tank Dell, Nico Collins, Joe Mixon, Dalton Schultz, C.J. Stroud. His size did not does not limit his production or his ability at all. That's it. That's all we've got. Good stuff, man. There's, there's a lot of talent in the 23 class and the 24 class, that's for sure. Um, but you, you will see throughout this, we did give some – precedent to the players who've already performed on the field you always got to give the tie break to those guys that we've already seen make it in the nfl because not all these prospects are going to turn out as much as we want them to it happens every year guys fail out